Hey guys, how's it going? The last video we did an air compressor that uh, basically was left in a factory, abandoned factory that just ran, 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 and finally blew up the compressor head up on top of it. So in the last video we put some stuff together to make it an operable, operable <laughs> compressor, and uh, that is all done, and it's going to its new home. But we still have the old compressor head that came out of it. And the other video kind of rang long, ran long. It kind of still turns over, but I figure when we do an autopsy on it and uh, open it up and see what happened. I figure we'd probably start with that cylinder head first. So that's the intake. This is the exhaust or input output. I'm guessing that maybe one of the two let go. It's a two piston setup, two cylinder. And I don't think the other one's far behind. You can't see much in there yet. I'll put the top. That one's gonna fight. Seen the pattern here? Yeah. Let's grab a ratchet and crack them loose. Yeah, I think it just ran, ran, and ran. It eventually just kind of overheated itself. That's a tight one. Pushed all the oil out of it. I think we got that. And then once the oil was out of it, then it really overheated. It and the what probably stopped it, I don't think it kicked a breaker. It looks like the wiring on the compressor switch for the motor got so hot that the, one of the terminals actually just popped right off. Again, a friend bought a warehouse that was, you know, as is with all the stuff in it. So that's the backstory on it. And now we know why I was left behind. Ready? Drum roll, please. And it's getting this down to the valves, the little reed valves. Can we just should be able to pop that right off? I would think. Never had one of these apart. Let's go grab a hammer and a chisel. Give her a little what for. I'm not planning on fixing this, so. <laughs> Looks like a gas motor. It's got so much crap in it. I would say there's a, a fairly large between when that piston moves. That connecting rod is like, I don't know how it can be connected then have that much play. That ought to make a rod knock, huh? All right. So let's, where else can we get in on this thing? The bottom looks like it comes loose. The weird oil pan, huh? Let's go get set up. We'll get a little something to take all those off and see if we could pop that out of our way. I haven't drained any oil out of this neither, so whatever's in it. Whatever's in it. What a weird oil pan, huh? Yeah, I never had one of these apart.
think we'll have to hit it with a hammer. I think so. We're in. It's like a little mini engine. Except for the weird oil pan and the, the metal debris that's on there. Can you see? I expect it to see actually worse than what it is, but not that it's good. That one's pretty tight, but that one you can see the color difference, it overheated. Hopefully you can see. And let's go get the oil out of it. And get those rock caps off. Yeah, I was literally expecting chunks to come out of it. What if we could actually make a gas engine out of one of these? I'm sure you could, but not. Nah, well, reed valves? Yeah, you probably need one, something with a camshaft, I would think. I am, I'm gonna set that up, let that drain a little bit. Let's go get the one that's not burned up out first. <laughs> what do you say we just hit it with a little bit more authority that do it. just drop them right in there actually that one's not too bad huh got some wear on it but I you know I expected to see the thing got spit out Push that one right out of there. See? Do they sell rebuild kits? Are they cheap enough just to, to replace? No stuck rings. Yeah, this thing made a racket. Let's go find out how this one did. Dud. This one did. Building the wager not quite as well. Watch the nuts were just loose. That's only thing that was wrong with it. Well, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Is it a bad sign for the rod cap doesn't want to come off? Yeah, that one's uh, telling a different story, that's for sure. And we'll see the difference between that and that uh, quite a bit. You would thought like both of them would have seized up instead of just the one. Yeah, they're both getting about the same amount of oil, right? They're just a, it's just a splash system. It's not like it's um got an oil pump. You can see like one got oil before the other one did. Thing coming out. That is going to need a beating with a brass rod. Let's go. Make sure it's off the bench all the way.
It's gonna fall on the floor, but hey. There we go. Ah, got you. Got you by the pinky. Done on the top side too. The wrist pin blew right out of it. That's probably where more that's where all the play was coming right there. <laughs> you think that's the problem? <laughs> did the pin just did it did half the hole get egged out? Man, that thing must have just ran and ran and ran, huh? Look at that slop. I knew it had like a half inch of, of movement on it. Yeah, we, we even fixing that with a rebuild kit. <laughs> Let's. Yeah, the bearing's gone in the rod. Here's the other end of the cap. Let me I'll wipe my hands off and then I'll uh, we can do show and tell. And right, I can get you nice and close. Yeah, that uh, ground itself down. Like a good 90 thou missing off of that one. It's even got its own like, groove in the center of it. Let's see what the jug looks like. So the burned up side is on the right. It looks like the top end took too much wear, you know? A little bit of light probably wouldn't hurt you neither, huh? Let's uh, go take a walk. You could definitely see, you know, that where the ring stops on this one, it's much more like a burn compared to this one, which is more, there's really not much there at all on that one, nothing, you don't even feel it. That's a definite on that one. And bring that back. It's almost through the bearing. Altogether, it didn't. It didn't spin. It's still locked into the tabs. It's funny how just the one hammered itself to death, and not. And it's flat too. You know, a compressor is not like it, it lays on its side. You can say, okay, one side took damage because you know it, it was more higher out of the oil or not. That. I don't know if you can get that out of there. I would think it would have yeah, a retaining ring. There we go. The retaining ring is still there. Let's go over on the vise. Get that out. Let's go see if any of the rings are stuck. Not stuck, but they're gooey. Like that one's got a lot of drag to it when you're moving it. I know oil ring seems like it's Oilering feels like it's just not springing out enough to go touch the bore. Or maybe it's just got overheated and lost its uh, you know, spring temper there. Yeah, this one's kind of the same too. Let's go see if we can get the connecting rod off the piston. Look how much crap the difference is too. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. It like. I wouldn't think you would take an air compressor apart and see the like the, the carbon and stuff on it. Just like if you took a lawnmower, a crappy lawnmower apart, you expect to see that. But just not in this. And I, I don't know if that's just because it overheated. Maybe the when it overheated, it was pushing the oil past the rings. And that's where that deposits came from. Just don't know. And I would have expected that, you know, something with no fuel in it, just air blowing going through it to be almost spotless on the inside. Guess not. Let's see if we can get that out of there. I'm gonna launch.
launch it across the room. It's flipping down into the hole. Let's go get a pick. I don't think there's a shoulder behind it. There's nothing there to, to stop it from going downward. You know what I mean? The, it, the back half is just wore completely off. Get it out of there. There we go. I have a feeling there's going to be a burr around here where it's not going to want to get, get tapped out. Maybe not. Let's go flip that around. Beat on it with a hammer. Actually, probably should take that clip out too. If I can get the, the punch down in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly what it does. It falls down inside. I hear it landed. <laughs> oh. yeah, let's see if we get that out of there. It, someone made a uh, comment, I think it was on a carburetor tear down, that uh, they do it inside a bucket or pail so that if something gets lost, it kind of stays inside there. It's kind of a good idea. Kind of hard to do when you do it on video, but. Right. What do you think? I think it's the piston, the rod, both. The pin, I would say that rod is a tad on the oval side, huh? I'm amazed that it stayed together. I'm surprised it just didn't de destruct. Almost there though. Yeah, and the, uh, let me get this out of here. Get that pin the rest of the way out. Don't recommend doing this on a on a good piston. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, they all egged out that gut. So there was probably about a quarter inch move on the rod. And you guys can see the difference, the dis yeah, the distance between there and there. It's almost a whole nother cup that is up inside there. I thought it was moving. What's that saying? Well, there's your problem. Yeah, I'd say so. And the rod. I'm surprised that the piston didn't hit the top of the cylinder head, too. I don't know how much room is in one of these. It seemed like it was fairly high up when we looked at it, right? It's worn at an angle, too. That side has got a lot more. That side's not too too bad, and that side's got a ton. So, what would cause it to wear on an angle, though? You think it just beat itself straight up and down, right? You can see it's also at the bottom there. There's still a little bit of meat left on that side. No, that wouldn't have hit. It would have knocked all that crap off, you know, that carbon built up. Well, we know what ailed it anyway. Anybody want it? <laughs> Cheap. Free. Pay to take it. Take a quick look at those reed valves. Reed valve is like a, 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 one, a check valve. It's spring-loaded. Allows it to go that way, and when pressure goes this way, it blocks it off. Do these? I wonder if these even had anything. You would air, you would draw air, so it's separate. Is it? Yeah, I guess it'd be. It's completely sealed off. I'm looking at that upside down. Am I missing? missing something that's why so two sets of reed valves that's what it is yeah one goes one direction one goes the other so it allows it to come in this way and out the other way when the pressure goes the other direction 
something like that. Yeah, it just baked itself. Well, I ain't fixing that one. All right, guys, so we just had a little bit of fun tearing into this. Just wanted to see, you know, kind of cool to see what makes it tick and, you know, what happened to it. I always like taking this stuff apart. One of the kids used to do that all the time. I got in trouble for it. <laughs> you know, take your dad's electric razor apart and you never hear the end of it. So, I would say, I don't know. I'll let you guys come up with a synopsis of why one cylinder was perfectly fine and one is totally wiped out. Why did one overheat so much and then the other one? The fan is kind of in the middle of it. So I, I can't see one side getting hotter than the other. Actually, no, wait, because the fan is on the end of it. Maybe that's it. That's right. So if the fan's blowing across it. Maybe this gets cooler than this one. That's the one that's good. That's the one that's burned up. And the fan that was on it was that. And that was on there as the pulley blowing air across it. Maybe, maybe that's why it went. Anyway, I'll still let you guys uh, entertain uh, the comments as far as uh, what you think. All right, guys, we're going to go shut her down. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out, just playing with old junk and uh, seeing what makes them tick. Until the next one, I will see you guys later. And for those who care, it's at about 24 hours and it held pressure, no problem. So pretty good as far as being sealed up.